I woke up in an old motel. Many of my days started this way. For a while, anyway. Eventually, I started going out of my way to meet people, which led to finding places to stay. But there was a certain comfort that came with staying in a motel, and a modicum of safety that was hard to find in the home of a stranger. Something about the low-rent interior decorating and old flickering televisions of motels is like home, or home in a parallel reality. Two months before that, I decided I needed to find her. I was spending too much time thinking, wondering, imagining. But I righted myself and began planning, working out the details. I was making telephone calls to anyone that might know her or have any notion where she might be. I quit my job. This was my new job. One morning, I decided that I had enough of a lead to warrant leaving town. Hopped a bus and headed far away from home. The road would be my new home. I had a few towns to visit, several addresses, her name, but I didn't have much else. No telephone number, nothing to make direct contact from a distance. I was scared, but the changing topography and accents kept me exhilarated. I reached my first destination, talked to a man I had only spoken to over the telephone. He gave me further instructions, hints, I thought. Take such and such street to such and such a street, make a left, go through two stoplights, make a right, should be the third house on the right. I arrived at the house, knocked on the door, an elderly gentleman answered. There's no one here by that name. But I stayed positive. I had more leads. But each town, each house became a different version of the same thing. No one had heard of her at any of the addresses. Eventually I had to give up. I ran out of clues. The gas station in Houghton. I met a guy from Brighton who bought the entire case of Twinkies from the convenience store and had a specific place for them in the cab of his truck. He said he stopped here every time because they sold the cases for 20% less. And I was thinking, what a life, when he jumped to talking about his mom and how she lived two miles from the station but refused to meet him for lunch. Despite my failure, I didn't want to leave. I sensed her presence. I knew she was close. If I had just stayed a while longer, we could find each other. She would be drawn to me. I imagined we had a psychic connection, that I could send her thoughts, tell her where and when to meet me. After a time, I knew I was wrong about this as well. But I stayed. I met a photographer who allowed me to live in his attic. He was an eccentric fellow. I liked him because of it. We went to the ocean almost every day. One day the fog rolled in. It was impenetrable. I could see but a few feet in front of me. On this day, I decided it was time to go home. My friend was a figure receding into the fog and into the depths of my mind. I've been home for a little while and I'm ready to leave again. I will find my mother, my real mother, maybe this time.